you know, we talk a lot about slowing down the aging process, especially at conferences like this at the A4M. Mm -hmm. Can science, do you think, in the future actually reverse aging? And, and if so, I mean, to what degree, to how, how young could we go back and become? Yeah, I think, I think we're already there, quite frankly. I think the, um, the introduction of telomerase activators has made it possible for people to stop and reverse aging. And so if you go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Park 65, there's 150,000 views just about on patients of mine who are seeing signs of reversed aging. Mm -hmm. Now, FDA-wise, we can't make claims that it's reversing a disease, but they're just interesting stories. So I do think that telomerase activation is a big part of the equation. But once we get the custom stem cell, they can take whatever best cells you have, whether it be from your sperm, and you can custom differentiate a kidney or liver. Then you can get like a factory original part, like that Corvette would be just like the original one off the line in 67. Um, then you can look and perform at a really young age. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because um, as we're aging, a lot of our stem cell library gets older, so they're like replacement parts from worse and older parts. But they can find the best copy that mom and dad gave you and then um, give you a really fresh Scott Peters liver, mm -hmm. you know. So that, again, that's why I say negligible senescence. And yeah, you could be 100 and feel like you're 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, it bothers people. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to have to handle. Yeah. Um, I was at a dinner the other night, and I introduced the concept, and everyone was really anxious about running out of money. And I kept on telling mm -hmm. them, listen, you know, you're going to want to work, and you're going to be productive. So, mm -hmm. you know. I know the people, the people that retire, I think after airline pilots retire, they have a high incidence of sudden death, and that's true of a lot of people. So working is a blessing and <clears throat> keeps you active. Mm -hmm. So people think getting old means getting sick, and now if you get really old, you run out of money. Again, this is a sort of a scarcity mentality that mm -hmm. people need to get over. I mean, I have so many people that on TA65, they find new love or they start new careers or they go back to school. Because when you don't draw up that end point at 85 mm -hmm. or whatever, you realize that there's a lot you can do. And you know, whether you live 85 or 850, really, people need to take it a day at a time and, and do one foot in, the, in front of the other type of things. Mm -hmm. I really don't think if we lived 850, people would conduct themselves very differently. Mm -hmm. They might have a midlife crisis at 825 or something. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, a lot of it's um, quality, not quantity. Yeah. Yeah. How close are we, do you think, to seeing a, a real jump in life expectancy? I mean, is it, is it, you know, 10 years down the road? Are we looking at 50 extra years? I mean, what, what do you foresee? I mean, I, I, who knows? But I think that the um, adoption of telomerase activators and hopefully the mass production of it will um, pay incredible dividends. So I think that people who are in good state of health now, they've already, you know, assuming that they can afford it, uh, they've already seen their life expectancy bump to 150. Easy. Hmm. It's already here. So, you know, I have this um, idea to have people donate money to other people, like save the children, but for older people. So hopefully that'll be a way to um, monetize the karma. If somebody's a good person, but they can't afford TA, then another person could donate to them and watch their progress uh, at a personal level. No, there's no administrators, there's no charities or mm -hmm. watchdog. You give the money to this person, you see them get younger and healthier. And that's a really nice way to, um, to use the tool of money, I think.